<laughs> All right, creatures of the night. Welcome to Talking Taker, episode 194 of our encyclopedic exploration, digging up the career of the greatest professional wrestling character of all Tizam, The Undertaker. My name is Alex Dorio. I want to thank you for joining us for yet another round of Dead Man Talking. And I am joined, as always, by my tag team partner, my wrestling buddy, my fellow creature of the night. He, I drew him in the Talking Taker Secret Santa Pool this year, Mr. Travis White. Uh, it's the only name in the basket, so uh, I hope you got mine too, buddy. But uh, Travis, man... Uh, look, you're looking like you're trapped in the closet there. Everything wow. going okay? <laughs> is it okay to make an R. Kelly joke in 2021? Well, I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anymore what's okay to say and what's not to say. It's all right. But yeah. Nobody's uh, listening. Apologies. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> apologies to our listeners or watchers because I'm in the closet at our new home. We, My wife and I recently moved, and so I lost out on my recording space. But we got more space overall. But, yeah, I'm in the closet, so. I'll try to hang some take her stuff up behind me next time instead of our just her clothes and my clothes. But anyway, well, you're in a new space. I actually just recently moved. So yeah. I've kind of got a new setup here. I've got the collection behind me. We're going to talk about that in a oh, minute yeah. because you're in a new space. The podcast is in a new space. We're, we're entering the taker verse, uh, the multiverse right. of the undertaker because Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking about it for a few months. We're not the only Undertaker podcast game in town. There is another Undertaker podcast that exists in the universe. And you know what? We're cool with it. We're friends with him. In fact, we wanted to bring him on. I've been on his show. And now he is returning the favor, folks. You've heard. You've probably listened to it. I hope you have. If you listen to our show, we're talking about collecting dead man and the man behind it himself mr steven zeman the z-man steven thank you for joining us man oh it's a pleasure thank you for having me on absolutely this has been a long time coming uh you've been doing the podcast now since uh since march ish or yeah. april or okay March, April, long yeah, long right long as time. we were ending i think right near the time we were wrapping it up wasn't it yeah, I think I think so. I think it, I worked it worked out perfectly. Like right when you were doing your last episode, I was like getting everything ready to set mm-hmm. my first one. So it was just like perfect timing. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Every and, new beginning comes from some other beginning's end, uh, as, as they would say. Wisdom, right there, from, yeah. from Travis. <laughs> <laughs> So that's awesome, man. And and you've kind of taken a different twist on this whole idea of doing an Undertaker podcast. You know, we, of course, covered every single Undertaker match in chronological order, uh, much to our dismay. But uh, (laughs) perhaps, I mean, you may have taken on even a bigger undertaking, if you will, Stephen. Explain to people sort of the idea behind your podcast uh, and what what it looks like uh, for a typical episode uh, for Collecting Dead Man. Sure thing. So when I was like getting everything ready to start the podcast, you know, I wanted something different and I wanted to blend both things of what I liked, you know, my collection of action figures and also um, Undertaker matches. So each week I would like go through like what's happening in Undertaker news or Undertaker figure news. Uh, I would go into what I have picked up in like weekly purchases and then I would dive, you know, do something towards, you know, a favorite Undertaker match of the week, or if something like I just did the Survivor Series bracket because it was Survivor Series time. I like do stuff around pay-per-views, some of my favorite SummerSlam matches, uh, favorite Royal Rumble. So like, it's, it's things get spread out. Things may overlap. Like I'm doing uh, lookbacks with Randy Turco and Kane and Night Ten. So things overlap <laughs> there. You you get the tag team matches and also the Kane history. So it's like, it's fun to like look back, um, you know, different matches each week. And then to finish off the episode, I take like a weird or what the heck piece of Undertaker merchandise. Right. Talk about that, you know, and, you know, everything gets added into my collection sooner or later. So even the <laughs> worst, even the worst piece of Undertaker merchandise <laughs> will, will find itself into my collection sooner or later. That's because yeah, you're a true fan. 
it, exactly. It, and we're going to have to talk about Randy Turco later. We're, we're going to have to have the battle over Turco. Uh, you kind of stole him away from us here. And Whoa. he's joined Turco on a Turco on a pole match. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's opened the forbidden door uh, between yeah. our podcast. I would say, <laughs> hey, that's but true. I mean, the Genesis is ultimately right. You're trying to, basically create the greatest collection of undertaker merchandise in the universe i mean isn't that your ultimate goal it is my ultimate goal is eventually to have like at least uh every undertaker action figure made wow Um, well you know there's some of them out there which you know like the one of 100 superstars the hasbro mail away it's like a lot of them pricey a little of them, yeah, a couple of them pricey, a little out of reach, but yeah. you know, as as long as I can encompass a, a good selection, almost complete, that's good enough for me. And I, I think that's what makes collecting great is that you know it, it's something that this is not an easy collection to accomplish. It may not be something you ever accomplish, so that's you true. could do it for the next sixty years uh, if you wanted to. There'll always be yeah. things to chase, and with the Undertaker, yeah. there's probably always going to be new things being made, right? Exactly. And, you know, there's always going to be something new because he's, his uh, imagery will always be owned by WWE. Right. Yeah, so that's true. It doesn't matter if Mattel has the license or in five years someone else gets the license. And all these other things like the Foco bobbleheads or Funko or everything else that WWE has a license with, you know, Undertaker will eventually be made. Mm-hmm. So it's not like anything stopping. And Undertaker is so engrossed in WWE that they're never going to give, he's never going to give his license away to somebody else. No. And WWE is never, he's never going to lose WWE and saying he and WWE is never going to lose him. So right. they're yeah. always going to make something of him. They're going to continue pumping out that product. Even if it means going back to, you know, mean Mark <laughs> to those days to make those shirts. And there's a mean Mark figure coming out soon. I can't yeah. wait for that. I never would have guessed they would have no. made, no. but I love it. Making it. So got to add that. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, Travis and I, we've been really lifelong wrestling fans, you know, um, uh, since uh, since we were in elementary school, basically. We've been friends uh, since middle school, uh, and, you know, that's sort of why we started this podcast, this lifelong journey and fandom. Where does your Undertaker fandom come from? What, what are your early memories? Why is he such a meaningful, important uh, character to you? Yes. Um, I always... Uh go back to the first thing I ever saw of him, and that's him uh, hanging Austin on his symbol. Mm. I was like six and a half years old, uh, wow. just flipping channels, you know, late at night, which I shouldn't have been. Yeah, that was late <laughs> at night, dude. So I, I turned on the- Past I turned your on bedtime. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> turned on the TV when I shouldn't have, so I got in trouble the next day, so. <laughs> it's worth it. Uh, it was worth it, exactly. Yeah. It was worth it because I saw the last moments of Monday Night Raw where Undertaker hung Austin from his symbol and he had his eyes rolled back. He had the, the ominous music playing and then him touching the symbol and him, everything about it. Everything about, you know, it just captured your imagination. Mm-hmm. And you had you had Paul Bear around him. You had his druids. It just, the just the imagery, it's like, it's like, it's, Nothing I've ever seen before. Yeah, what is this? If you're flipping through yeah. channels, I mean, and that was the whole mindset uh, of, of like Vince Russo back then was yeah. to try to catch people like that. And that he succeeded with me because <laughs> like, December of 98 and we're talking December of 2021. So you have like 22 years later, yeah. 23 years later, and I'm still a fan. That's awesome. Uh, so were you a big... Uh, wrestling figure collector and and you is that something you played with back then in the in those early days yeah back when i was a kid you know i opened the stuff up that my parents got me uh played with the figures you know i had the titan tron because that was close to when the titan trons mm. were coming out uh had my own yes. figure bed so i played yes. with my figures and of course i always opened it up like up until um i started collecting mint on card when mattel got the license okay 
So looking back at all the things I opened when I was a kid, I was oh. like, oh, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? What am I thinking? <laughs> but you don't think about those things as a kid. You, don't, you know, yeah. you don't think about value and, and, and no, like future worth, all that sort of stuff. Asked, but when you're doing a mint on card collection in 2021, it's like, oh, I could have had this closed already. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny like we we're just you know in the process of moving right now and i opened a box of mine that has star wars characters from 98 99 when they re-released like did the mm -hmm. uh the re redo versions in the theater and then right before they released uh uh what's the first a uh, phantom menace I have all mm -hmm. i have these figures in the box still my son's like can we take his out and play with them so i was like no you're not. <laughs> like, you're not those are 23 24 years old like we're not getting on play with them today so we're gonna <laughs> Keep those when I pass away. You can sell them and they'll be worth something. I got Darth Darth Maul, Qui Gon, so that. So yeah. Anyway, I understand. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. funny. Uh, do you remember the first Undertaker figure you ever had? Yes, um, it is actually the Superstars Series Seven. So it's like this guy, Superstar Series Nine, but without the cloak. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, that was the the first you know updated Undertaker body mold. So it was like. It's like how I saw him when he was doing the thing with Austin. So it was like yeah. perfect. Exactly. The one you're showing there you right go. there. Right there. That's him. I remember that. I, I remember that being vividly being the first one I ever got. I mean, I, I don't know if it's the best, but it is. It's absolutely one of my favorites. Travis, did you have one of these? No, I didn't have, but I remember playing with yours. I had the big, tall Titantron one. Uh, the, like okay. that was next after that. Right the, after this, okay. Yeah, yeah. But that, I remember using that one at your house when we would do it all the time. So I that just was think great. This one. I love that one. To, uh, so I, I'm gonna destroy my uh, my shelf up here doing this episode tonight. But that's right. I wanted to do it. So yeah, I have him in reach. This guy, um, which I don't know which series this is, but this was in the the Buried Alive box set, which is where yeah. I got this guy. I never really liked this figure all that much. I just felt like it's too small. Like, look how skinny he is compared to to this Undertaker. And Undertaker's a big guy. So this one just seemed like... Uh, uh, this didn't represent Undertaker enough to me. This one was much more... This guy got, you know, major action in, in my fig fed. This was the, this was the <laughs> right way to do the Undertaker. He's got the perfect choke slam hand oh, right yeah. there. You could execute that perfectly. I, lo I love this figure. He's got the tattoos, which the other one doesn't have. So also it that. Feels, yes. feels much more like The Undertaker. Yes. But because because like like I was saying, with capturing my imagination, seeing him for the first time, you know, it's a guy covered in tattoos on his arm. Yes. You, know, it's like, it's, you don't see that. You don't see that. It's so it's so different and yet it's like it captures you. It's you know, it just it just captures you. It's like I, I can't think of a better word than that. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. That's why we've been doing this podcast, uh, you know, for for uh, over four years now is, is because of the way he captures your imagination and, like that. Yeah. And I mean, just along that line of him capturing you, I know a lot of people are raving and ranting about this MJF or CM Punk promo off they had the other day and saying it's the best thing in 20 years. I'm like, I'm sorry, but I think we're biased, but give me Triple H and Taker standing off in the ring, not saying a word to me. Yeah. That was more. I, I love the punk MJF promo. I love this. Sure, but Taker yeah. and Triple H facing off that one night where the, the you didn't see it coming. Looking at the sign, that was more captivating to me than yeah. Punk and MJF. I'm sorry, I'm old school though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the point is, the, Taker can captivate you. Exactly. Little things. Even his promos, you know, it's like a couple sentences long, but mm -hmm. you remember them. Yeah. I, I always remember, you know, it's hell trying to get to heaven. With mm. Shawn Michaels, you know, I, I always remember him talking to, down to Triple H when he's trying to set up the Hell in the Cell match, saying, you know, Shawn says you're be I'm, he's better than you. You know, he is. You know, when he said stuff like that, you know, it, it's the little things that, you know, just makes you remember things forever. Exactly. Nobody knows his character and understands it more. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... You know, you've got a couple of great representations of Undertaker there. I definitely had the uh, the purple glove one right there. Wow. That, that was that was the first Undertaker figure I had. I never had the Undertaker Hasbro uh, growing up. I had I had a, I had lots of Hasbros, um, but I did not have the Undertaker one. Uh, but I had that purple glove one. Um, what you don't have to give me a dollar amount, but what is 
what is the most expensive item that you've added to your collection so far? So don't, don't, you don't have to tell me how much you spent on it, but what is the item what was the that item, cost yeah. the most? Whoa. Um, I would say probably I, I recently picked up the the last Classic Superstars Undertaker, Classic Superstar Series Twenty Eight. Okay, what does that one look like? What what does he got on? Uh, that, that's him as the badass. It's him okay. with the, okay. the plain black shirt and everything. Yeah, and that was that was the last Classic Superstar, so it was like very limited. That was when Jax was losing the license. Okay. So it's not made. So yeah, I spent I spent uh, close to over a hundred on that one. Nice, pretty penny on that one. Okay, I'm looking yeah. at it now. It's, it's. Uh, he's got like a black t-shirt and jeans on. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I have never seen that figure before. That is right. I never, I never knew it existed. Before I did not I even know that checkers. existed. Yeah. I wonder if I can. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can share my screen. If this will show up. Uh, I don't know if this will. Did that do anything? There he is. Yep. Yeah, oh, y'all can see that? Okay. Yep. Nice. I don't, I don't know if that'll show up in the video or not. Uh, nice. But yeah, there you go. There's that. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. I lost my call. Okay. Stop sharing. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. I hear you. Uh, okay. So that's the most expensive thing. What's uh, on the flip side of that? What, what do you think is like the best deal you've gotten where you're like, ooh, I, I, I got a great steal uh, on this Undertaker item? Uh, probably I got the classic superstars one of three thousand Undertaker for like less really? than fifty. Really? Yeah. Whoa! Wow! Now, tell people what that one looks like. That's him in his debut uh, attire, but it's like based off like Survivor Series '91 because it comes with a championship. Okay. And he has like a soft goods uh, jacket. It comes with a hat. He has his tie. So it's like very like 90, 91 Undertaker. Yeah, that's cool, man. Very yeah. nice. I, you know, I, I try to get a deal on everything I buy because you, you got to, you know, either make an offer or, you know, don't jump on the first thing you see because, you know, because there always may be one out there that will come up later on or maybe the person will send you an offer if you watch it long enough. So I always try to get a, try to get a deal, not, not try to jump on things right away. You have to have patience in the collecting yeah. game, for sure. You have to have patience. And, you know, even though you may want it and you say, oh, I need this, but it's like you just got to back off a little because you, know, you don't want to spend too much right away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, rarest slash weirdest item that you've added to the collection so far. Oh. Well, weirdest item is I got a, um, uh, a a tube of candy with a little uh, plastic mini Undertaker bust on the top. Yes. So, nice. From like, probably like 98, 99 ish, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. Candy jerkers, I think it's called. Like on the way out of like the supermarket, it'd be like right there in the candy yeah. aisle. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, do they so even still make stuff like that anymore? Because it was so big when like we were was, kids. I, ah, I know. I, I remember that as a kid. I remember all those candy, all those candy products that WWF used to have, mm -hmm. and like Pez yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they have like the the candy bust of him. I have. It's like, I was like, I told myself I don't think I would get into candy, but here I am. I have all this candy <laughs> merchandise to undertake. For as long as you don't I, eat it. No. <laughs> um, uh, I don't want to be the person on the news that twenty year old candy. <laughs> hey, that would be the weirdest thing on the news. Well, I was uh, listening to your latest episode, and you were talking about the one that's like uh, motorized, where he'll like spin around or do something. And I definitely mm -hmm. had stuff. I didn't have an Undertaker one, but I, but I remember weird candy items like that, you know, from back in the day. Yeah. So that, that made me laugh. Yeah, I oh, I remember that. Very vividly. <laughs> um, now you do a segment on the show. You, you talk about uh, you, you have the buried alive segment every week on the show where you take one of the just yeah. the worst, crappiest, ugliest, stupidest uh, Undertaker figures or merchandise things, kind of sort of WTF type oh. uh, Undertaker items. Give me like your top three or your top five 
absolute worst things that you've come across uh, Undertaker uh, merchandise uh, so far. Okay. Um, putting me on the spot here. I know. Hey, man. Yes. This, is so this, is. this is journalism uh, right here. Okay. One of them the will have seat. to be, even though I love the series, one of them will have to be the Maximum Sweats. Dude. It's just... Yes, <laughs> it is so awful, but I have such a, soft, such a soft spot in my heart for the Maximum Sweats, but they are so awful. Um, I would say uh, the, the classic Superstar Series 1 Undertaker is pretty bad. That's another <laughs> one. It's just too much of a, a mashup. Um, let's see. Oh, there it is. Oh, the Maximum oh, Sweats. oh my God. <laughs> Look at that face. I, I never know. had these. I remember them, you yeah. know, uh, when they came out, and I just, I don't, I don't I mean, want that. <laughs> I remember us like seeing those in the store and being like, "Nope, no like, thanks, not nah, <laughs> gonna do that." Yeah. It does not get better. It does not get better by series. No, no, they're yeah. short lived for a reason. Yeah, yeah. So you said the classic superstar, which series? Series one, series and, one the first and, one. And why is that one so bad? Um, it's um. Titantron Live in a Ruthless Aggression series. Um, they have give him white boot covers uh, for some reason when he has purple gloves on. So yes, that, that was a choice. Uh, he has to give, they give him a real short, tiny tie, and uh, they don't give him full uh, sleeves of tattoos for some reason. So, hmm. so that's the same and, series as this Andre the Giant, which is also. Which is awful because not, he has wrist tape for one thing and onto a giant never has worn wrist tape and two straps yeah. that's his whole thing is he has one strap that's, that's the only thing you have to do with this figure is just give him one strap yeah. but he's got yeah. he's got two shame, yeah. shame terrible figure i know all right and uh give me a third one give me a third absolute um, worst undertaker item Let's see. Absolute worst. Oh, there's so many to choose from. There's a lot of crap out there. There's a lot of there's a lot of crap out there. Um probably it's like a um probably that grow things. That thing you would dump in the water and you would like break oh. out of the coffin. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. Yeah. Where did you even find that? Uh, it, I remember having that actually as a kid. No you, way. Like, it was supposed oh. to grow into like an action figure, but the yeah. other problem is as it grew, it looked less and less like the Undertaker. Yeah. <laughs> and it like, it like became almost like putty-ish, I remember. It's like real soft and disgusting. Yeah, like right? slimy almost. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, it's, fit, it's like it distorted for some reason because it, 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 it's supposed to... You, it's a, as a small thing, it's very detailed, but as it grows, it just becomes distorted and disgusting. So yeah, I can't forget about that. All right. Excellent. So those are some things yeah. to avoid out there, but, uh, plenty to avoid. Out there. <laughs> now I've got my collection, you know, if you've been listening to the show, I, I, my long-term goal is I want to get a figure to represent, every one of the Undertaker's pay-per-view opponents. So uh, I've been slowly but surely going through that. Um, again, I'm not in any rush to do it, and it's fun to do it slowly. I like to I like to find stuff in stores when I can, but you know, I'll go to eBay and, and, and buy stuff uh, every once in a while. Um, Travis, not a collector, not a big uh, into collecting. So Steven, I want you to convince Travis let, let's say he's going to start that Undertaker figure collection. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what are what are the top three figures Travis needs to get from the start that, like, that's this is the essential ones you got to have. Write them down. The front of your display. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm nostalgia at heart. So I would get the first Undertaker figure you ever had. You know, it, okay. it, it, just, it, it, it speaks to you. You know, it's like it brings back memories. It's the first one you ever had. I agree so, with that. Yeah. Uh, the next one is probably the best representation of your favorite era of The Undertaker. So what, what is your favorite era of The Undertaker? Me? 
Yes. Yeah, you. Oh, golly, that's so hard. Uh, man, I don't know. Maybe maybe 90, 97-ish, that look. Maybe okay. either that or, like, honestly, late, like, him and Sean, like, I WrestleMania 25-ish time. So, But that one, <laughs> that, that figure Alex has right there. I mean, I, I think, just, I think you need that. that. That knocks the nostalgia and the second, you know, thing you just said. That's both of yeah. them right there. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I would totally go for the new Ultimate Edition Undertaker. Mm. That that hits that hits the the ninety eight look. That's a good choice uh, too. WrestleMania ninety eight, WrestleMania fourteen. Mm, yeah. With, with the robe and interchangeable heads and everything. Yeah. I mean, nice. it's a great figure. You speak of Vogues, and I have to go with one of my most nostalgic pieces, uh, SmackDown Series five, Undertaker and his Unforgiven WrestleMania fifteen attire. Oh, okay. okay. That was a good one. That was like the Super yes. Shredder look. Yeah, that's yeah. one of my favorite ones. So, if I so if I had to pick three that you just start either like Superstar Series Seven Taker, like Titan Tron Series One, that's one you remember, like the yeah. nostalgia. Uh, Ultimate Edition Undertaker or Mattel Elite, like around Series One ish, because that's like 2009 Undertaker, and then SmackDown Series Five. Gotcha. I like that answer Noted. because I, yeah. I I like that you incorporated his personal taste. Yeah. And, and I think, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I think that gets good. lost in collecting sometimes because because that's what mine is all about. Like, I love having my childhood figures up there. I have so many of those right. up there. And I know some collecting people are like, no, you got to have minty, like clean, fresh out of the box figures. I don't care about that. Like these mean right. so much more to me, even though they're not worth as much money because they're all beat up and scuffed. But I'd rather have that up there because that's they're mine. Yeah. Right. Mhm. Um. You know, if you ha- the Hasbro one is fine to get, but you know, it's it's hard to get a good one because a lot of them I've played with. Yeah. Well, let me uh, ask you a question. What's your favorite um, Hasbro, Jax, Mattel? What's your favorite like? Uh, I guess com- toy company that's done the figures. What, what do you think has done the best job? I guess. Uh, Mattel has done the best job. I think so. Okay. Mattel's done the best job. I'm nostalgic for Jax. Just because of the technology. I mean, they they've got the license most recently, so they yeah. have the technology to do it best. Okay. They have the technology. You. you know, they make the. You know, they've had it for eleven years now, mm-hmm. so they had it longer than anybody has had it. Right. Um. And you know they they've hit so many attires that yeah. Jack and Hasbro hasn't. They hit the current Undertaker. They've hit the '90s, the 2000s. So they they give you many options. Right. If, you know, if you're looking for options, Mattel's the best one. Um, you know, even though I give Jack so much crap, I always say at the end of it, you know, I I, I still love Jacks because it's nostalgic for me. Oh yeah, they made yeah, so many yeah. bad ones, but they made so many good ones too. It's yeah. like you know. <laughs> yeah. And um, the Hasbro's are good for what they are, just like the Bendoms are good for what they are. The Bendoms, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, I never. They're great display. They're like they're great yeah. to have in your collection now. We never they, played with they them. They sucked though. to play with. Yeah, we never <laughs> yeah. used those. They're terrible. No. Uh, yeah. I specifically would not request those for Christmas or anything. <laughs> Did not want those. Yeah. It's like the WCW ones nowadays. Like they're awesome to have on display. The Galoob WCW figures, but like you, they literally didn't move. You couldn't move mm-hmm. their arms. Like it was impossible to play with them as a kid. But now they're awesome. You just yeah. they're perfectly you know uh, opposed for for display and everything. Right. All right, so um, we'll, we'll kind of wrap up the interview portion of this podcast because uh, we're going to do a watch along here uh, in a few minutes. But it is oh, the Chris- yeah. it is the Christmas season here. It's uh, de- so this is our December bonus episode. So um, I-, I want all of us to kind of close this out. Let's share some Christmas memories of wrestling. So, Stephen Travis, do you have like a favorite? <laughs> christmas present you got that was wrestling related and i know travis you and i kind of we, we talked about this on an early episode uh of the show but i think we can reshare or, or come up with a different answer for this but uh what, what's a great christmas wrestling memory uh that you got anybody can answer <laughs> i i'm here i'll go uh so one just memory it wasn't christmas it was december but it was December. dismember i mean you and i and our friends going 
<laughs> you can't beat that. That was it's whatever. Crap on that shot you want. The experience that we had together and the stories we had to tell was phenomenal. But as far as actual tangible something, a gift wise Christmas, it would have to be the wrestling dummy my aunt made for me. Um, it was six feet tall. It was just a guy in a, like an NWO shirt, and she just stuffed him with like cotton or whatever. Like she, it's like, it like it was six foot tall. Had a head. She stitched on, stitched arms on. It was like he was in black jeans and a black NWO shirt, and uh, it was like I mean it was bigger than life size for me because I was a small guy. And uh, Alex and I would beat that thing up from pillar to post. I mean we'd go sixty minute Broadways with it. We'd go all the time. It just it, but like. In between commercial breaks when Raw and Nitro, I was out in the living room beating up that guy, run back to watch Dean Malenko and Eddie Guerrero wrestle. So, you know, I was just, that was like, that gift was just a gift that kept on giving. We've used that for years, man. And so, in fact, my parents are getting my middle son, the middle kid, a little dummy like that ish for Taekwondo to <laughs> wrestle with at the house. Oh, yes. He's been wanting to wrestle with at the yes. house. So they're getting him a little. It's made at the store, but they're getting a little dummy like that to play with. So oh. I'm very excited. Oh, but I had enough leeway, enough lead time. I would have asked my aunt to make one again, but I did not have enough notice. So. It's always next year. Anyway. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's my favorite Christmas uh, wrestling gift, I guess you could say. So. Nice. December to dismember. That must have been <laughs> an experience. <laughs> You know, we've got a whole episode on it back in the archives. You, you guys can check that I, out. We did a watch along of the the main event, uh, even though it was. Well, we also talked about the Undertaker's two matches in the uh, ECW Sci-Fi ECW days. Oh uh, yeah. So we made it Undertaker related, but then we did mm -hmm. a watch along for the uh, Elimination Chamber and shared our whole story of going to that in our hometown of Augusta, Georgia. Uh, one of my favorite episodes uh, we did, of course. Yep, but. Uh, Steven, I mean, what Christmas uh, Christmas wrestling memories? You got anything? Uh, yeah. I mean, usually my parents would save like a, a big wrestling gift for Christmas, whether it be like a um like the Titan Tron, or whether it be yes, like same here. A, Titan Tron yeah, was a Christmas present. That. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. I remember. I remember I'm getting so excited. <laughs> I remember getting the Titan Tron for Christmas. I remember getting like the I think the following Christmas was the um. Real Sounds Arena was like that SmackDown ring where you would okay. like, yeah. So it's like you would get, I would get figures like during the year, and then at Christmas would be like the ring or yeah. the Titan. So it's like you know, just fun memories. You know, think about my parents and stuff like that. You know, it's like it just was like you know, progressed every Christmas. Yeah. Like that. No, absolutely. I think, I think a lot of people, you know, our age have that same titan tron christmas morning memory yeah. that it came out like right in time for christmas uh, if i recall so yeah that was a big one um and, and i think that's the one i talked about last time we did this mm -hmm. uh and and uh hulk hogan wrestling buddy i remember that was a big christmas morning thing Ooh, i got the sting but, uh, when that oh too, you yeah. had the sting one i didn't, I didn't even know no that. i mean the one with the broken nose remember the oh yeah 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 flashing my <laughs> walking arm one. yeah i got that for christmas at <laughs> 98 yeah anyway yeah uh, I was trying to think of a different one, and, and one of my favorites was uh, 2001, Christmas morning. I got uh, the PlayStation 2 with SmackDown, Just Bring It, and it was completely unexpected. I, I hadn't even asked for it. I was not... I was not expecting to get a PlayStation 2. Uh, it was, I, I thought it was too new. Like I, I wasn't even like, it wasn't even on my radar to ask for that. Uh, but that was the last, last present under the tree, you know, last thing that Santa brought and my parents knew enough to have SmackDown, just bring it right there. Um, Travis and I spent many, many hours playing the other two SmackDown games on the uh, first PlayStation. And this one was just like, you know, back in 2001, those graphics were like, oh, my God, I'm watching I'm, I'm watching real life. It's real life. <laughs> yeah. it's, the first, uh, it's the first wrestling game of commentary. Oh, man, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I had the commentary on there. Uh, of course, the creator wrestler, storyline mode, so much awesome stuff on there. And, uh, you know, used to do, used to have the fig feds, but then I had the video game feds as well. And Travis and I, we would, uh, call each other up and, and talk about the results of our, uh, video oh, game feds made up shows, week to yeah. week, uh, and all that sort of stuff. So not uh, only were we keeping up with Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, Nitro, Thunder, 
ECW on TNN. We also had my show and your show. We were keeping up. With. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I had the IWF Insane Wrestling Federation and Travis. I don't remember yours. What was the name? XWA Extreme Wrestling Alliance. Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So uh, yeah, man, that was an that was a great Christmas gift. Uh, wrestling. Related. I remember that year. Yeah. So many other ones, uh, and uh, hopefully many more. Hopefully many more. So. Uh, well, Stephen, man, thank you so much for sharing all that, sharing about your collection. Um, but we're not done with you yet. Well, no. we, we still got Go you on the line, uh, and you're going to stick around to do a little watch along with us, aren't you? Yes, yes. Of uh, one of my favorite matches. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lie to us. Uh, it's, uh, not, it's not your favorite match. It's not anybody's favorite match. But uh, we got two Undertaker podcasts, dueling Undertaker podcast here. We had to pick a match that, to represent that. So we're going with SummerSlam 1994, Undertaker versus Undertaker. Uh, we're going to do a quick watch along for this. It's only about 20 minutes long. Uh, so we, uh, we're we going to give you the timestamp, guys, to uh, cue that up with us and watch it along with us. We'll do a little running commentary and hopefully have a few laughs uh, at this re- WrestleCrap moment right here. I probably will have a few laughs. laughs. I mean... It's it's not saying a lot when my favorite part of this is the Leslie Nielsen vignettes. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good. Undertaker's entrance. Um, well, uh, if you want to join us with that, of course we'll uh, we'll make it entertaining for you, even if you can't watch along with us. But uh, on Peacock, it is uh, SummerSlam 1994 or SummerSlam Season Seven, uh, and Episode One. Episode One. Yep. Uh, <laughs> We are going to queue it up at 2 hours, 26 minutes, 30 seconds. So uh, 2 hours, 26 minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, it is right past the last commercial break on there. And it's uh, you're going to see uh, the screen has got a bunch of dork fans just waving at the <laughs> screen <laughs> right there. Waving right at me. I have yep. a little kid that looks like Dan Lambert for yep. me. <laughs> <laughs> you got some guy with Bret Hart sunglasses. Yeah. Uh, so we'll give you a few back. minutes to cue that up to join us. Once again, two hours, 26 minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, as you're doing that, uh, you know, we're, we're doing these episodes every month now. So Travis and I, we like to take a little time to talk about what's going on, uh, random appearances of The Undertaker, news and notes, things that have come up in the past month since we last recorded. Uh, and Stephen, of course, we, we'd love for you to chime in on this stuff as well, because uh, there's been quite a bit uh, in the past month of November. Uh, one thing happened right after we recorded last month was that The Undertaker showed up in Saudi Arabia to... Uh, yes. <laughs> Welcome. To get to he give an introduction, he got my hopes up so high to right? be a crown jewel. He cracked my hopes up so high. Oh he no no! He flew no. to ground. He flew to Saudi Arabia not to be on WWE's return there, no, but no, no, to no. instead do what, Alex? <laughs> Introduce Mister Three Hundred Five, Mister Worldwide Pitbull. <laughs> oh my word! How much money do you in, think I he mean, got in for that? Full taker regalia. I mean, yeah, it was yeah. You think he it made was insane six figures for that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> he did. And it had his music playing and everything. Like, it was insane. So, what I could not believe it, man. That was, it was insane. Ground Jewel is a good pay-per-view for WWE, but that was even better. He's introducing, he, he outshined the, the main roster now. There you go. introducing Pitbull for no reason. When has he ever done anything with Pitbull? <laughs> well, he had, uh, he was backstage with Post Malone that one time. Right. Post Malone or Kid Rock or Limp Biscuit, whatever, like, uh, George Strait. I get it. But, like, I don't know, man. Pitbull, I just didn't see it. So. And <laughs> well, who knew? So many Saudi Arabian people love Pitbull. I had no idea. We didn't know. We didn't know. Now we know. Uh, but Undertaker was very active, you know, promoting this new. Uh, Netflix Escape the Undertaker movie. Uh, we, of course, devoted last month's episode to it with uh, St. Ridley and Randy Turco did that uh, great uh, analysis of all of it. Uh, Steven, man, give us your rev- quick quick uh, one or two cents review of Escape the Undertaker. Um, I liked it for what it was. It was fun. It was entertaining. Um, I think you guys did a, a great job reviewing it as well. I mean, is Undertaker in the new day. You know what you're getting into. 
it's hard to beat. Yeah. It, it yeah. was a very fun experience for what it was. Yeah, for sure. Um, one of those places he was on to promote and, and to uh, just be interviewed was The Bump on uh, WWE Network or Peacock or is on all their social media, Facebook and everything. Um, and he actually did a two part interview on there. Uh, the uh, week of Thanksgiving, uh, a couple days in there. And, you know, uh, we encourage you guys to go out and watch it. We won't recap everything that he said on there, yeah. but it was, you know, pretty good interview for what it was. He told uh, some stories we've heard before, but also some we hadn't. Um, told a great... My... Oh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 go ahead. No, go ahead. ahead. Uh, no, his go ahead. story he told about uh, running into Bob Hope after the Thanksgiving Day <laughs> yeah. Parade. That was, that was my favorite one. Like... <laughs> Didn't think I was going to hear Undertaker talk about Bob Hope. <laughs> no. That, and then I texted you, and I said, out the gate, what does he talk about? And he did. Uh, talked about what I always bring it back to is Batman. He talked about how, you know, he's Batman. He's just waiting by the phone for Commissioner Gordon, Commissioner McMahon, to call him, you know, if he needs it. So, you know, they asked him what he'd been doing. But, like, so I just, as as who I am, I popped huge for that because of, just a Batman fan, plus the fact that it's Taker doing the Batman thing. I was just like, oh, this is great, man. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Just jump out the mm -hmm. gate. But, yeah, we don't want to spoil the rest of it for you. But, yeah, it's a really neat interview. Um, just go watch it because it's cool to see him. Uh, just cool to see him, you know, when it, whatever he's doing nowadays. It's awesome. And I think the big thing that a lot of the – wrestling news sites uh uh picked up on was Undertaker talking about uh Omos and how he yeah. has a lot of respect for him how he kind of sees him as possibly the next Andre the Giant or having some of those same similar qualities so I mean what better compliment can you get uh than a guy like the Undertaker comparing you to Andre the Giant I mean doesn't get much better than that right exactly um we also he talked about a lot of his outfits throughout the years, Survivor Series specifically. So that was fun. He didn't talk about the Survivor Series 2000 pants. Uh, maybe another time, no. another interview oh. we can get him on here to talk about that. Uh, but also, a friend of the show, The Godfather, uh, was yes. was on the bump as well on one of those similar episodes. Uh, had a little. Did you catch that, Travis? I did not get to see it. Yet, oh no. man, a little run in from Shane McMahon on that episode really? as well. Awesome. He, he just surprises Godfather and. Gives him a hug, just pops in That's there. That's awesome. But uh, mate, talked about Batman, Travis. We get we got a fellow Batman fan on the line right here. What's your, what's your favorite Batman movie, Stephen? Oh, Batman Forever. What? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. Yes. Wow. I have so many questions. <laughs> That's another podcast. Yes. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. Hey, it's subjective. Art is subjective. You are entitled to your opinion. Thank yeah. you. Batman Forever. I did not see that coming. Not gonna mm -hmm. lie. So that's funny. That's I... funny. That's but is that that's George Clooney? No, that's oh, Kilmer. Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. Yeah. yeah. Not, not Riddler. George Clooney. No, no. Yeah. No, no. Riddler and uh, Two Face. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I loved it, man. When I was uh, you talk about nostalgia, man. That one. Oh, that's, a, that's yeah. Oh, yeah. Deep nostalgia for me, for sure. Absolutely. Um, uh, and then Travis, we uh, we should mention the Broken Skull sessions as well. We it's come up, you know, so many times on here. Everybody on the Broken Skull sessions just about has an Undertaker story. And this month's episode was Jeff Hardy. Travis, you are you know one of the biggest Jeff Hardy fans out there. So tell us what uh, Taker said about or, or, or Jeff Hardy mentioned about uh, Undertaker on that episode. Yeah, another another great interview. Uh, Austin's amazing. He's so good. And I wish it was uh, twice as long as it was. it was. This was a really short one. It was just slightly over an hour. I feel a little like little bit shorter. Shorter. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they talk about, obviously, that iconic match, that world title match on Raw in the summer of 2002 that we covered on here, you know, and just the iconic call from Jim Ross, you know, make yourself famous, kid, and just all that. And But Jeff just talks about how that match is what put him – like he can never repay Undertaker for what he did for him in that one night, you know, and it just, I don't want to spoil everything he says, but I want you guys to go watch it. But, and he also talks about how he personally derailed his own momentum right after that, you know, this with the Undertaker, he made. Right here. that Undertaker right there, big yep. evil. Uh, and then Austin even talks about how, you know, he's a big bully, he's a heel, but he comes back and shows you respect. And Jeff's like, yeah, like 
it was a big deal. And like, that was legit, you know? So it's really, really cool. You can tell how grateful Jeff is 19 years later um, for what that one match did for him. And he is not wrong. He's dead on. So yeah, really cool. Great interview again. Jeff Hardy is, uh, he's fantastic. I, I just, he's, he's phenomenal. So does Bargain Skull Sessions. Oh, excuse me. I was trying to pull up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Had the Undertaker's uh, music right there. Uh, no, those those episodes are always excellent. Uh, if if you're listening to this, this podcast, this snuck up on me. I didn't even know it was coming out. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. it was supposed to be one on the week of Survivor Series, and it did not. It came out the like this past Sunday, like after Thanksgiving. So, and they they have a John Peacock's... King one in the can. Apparently, I don't know. Like they they were snipped it and advertised it for a second, and they took it away. I don't know. Peacock's been taking stuff off and advertising yeah. and not playing it. And they like got the, the uh, thing, yes. Vlad, the yeah, Conqueror. Those are, yes. <laughs> the Nexus documentary, which they're never going to show now because there's no more Nexus members on the roster anymore. Like, like the God, entire no. Nexus is gone. Well, Wade, Barrett's, Wade Barrett is on I commentary. I guess he's NXT. still in commentary. That's yeah. the only one you can do. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, you're right. The rest of them are, are gone. So, but yeah, anyway. Well, we, of course, uh, we went in depth. Uh, that was our first return episode of the podcast earlier this summer. Yeah. Uh, episode 189. Uh, we did a watch along for Undertaker and Jeff Hardy uh, t- uh, on, on Monday Night Raw. So you guys can go check that out in the archives as well. Um, yeah, great. Uh, the, the Austin podcasts are always so good. Such a good interviewer. Um, can, I, can I do my Steve Austin uh, Broken Skull Sessions impersonation for you? Absolutely. All right, here it is. The sweet does <laughs> every interview, like, dude. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> and that, too. You yeah. know what he didn't do this time that he always does? And thank God, he did not offer him alcohol. <laughs> that yeah. would have been rough. He did. I yeah. think he was drinking tea or coffee or something. Yeah. He had his Broker's Call IPA over there, but yeah, he did. everybody else, yeah. he offers him something. But yeah. luckily, Some he knew his audience, and he did yeah, not he did. offer Jeff Hardy a drink. <laughs> So, anyway. All right. Well, let's do this. I think we've given plenty of people plenty of time to cue things up here. Uh, so, once again, SummerSlam 94, two hours, 26 minutes, 30 seconds. Um, gentlemen, are we ready? Do we need to take a bathroom break? Is nope. everybody good? We're ready. We're good? We're good. All right, we're good. Uh, well, Travis, we give you the honors, as usual, right. to give us the countdown here to tell us when to hit play uh, so we can watch this, uh, whatever it is. This, <laughs> whatever the heck this forever. is, man. <laughs> oh, come on. I went for it. This is Batman and Robin. This is Batman and Robin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go to 3, 2, 1, play, and we'll go on play. So we got 2, 26, 30. All right, everybody. 3, 2, 1, play. All right. Here we are. Everybody's waving at us. That guy. Wow. Such a 90s crowd. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, mine's talking to me. It's supposed to be muted. Sorry. There we go. Look at that jacket. Golly. It's fantastic. You guys keep talking. Mine mine froze up real quick, but I'll I'll catch up to you. Ted DiBiase is coming out in his sequin jacket, million dollar jacket, coming out there. The guy who introduced Undertaker to the WWF. That's right. Back what's your what's your timestamp? I got two twenty seven oh seven. Oh eight. Oh nine. Two twenty seven ten. He's in the green light, basking in the green light. Okay. Is that what you got, Steven? Yeah, two twenty seven yeah. two twenty seven seventeen. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm on here. All right. All right. Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man. Just glistening. Just shining <laughs> like money. Yeah. So, of course, quick recap. I'm sure if you're listening to this, you know what's going on here. But Undertaker, Royal Rumble 94, he ascended into the heavens after losing that casket match to Yokozuna. Ten other guys in there uh, took him out. And then um, there were some Undertaker sightings all throughout the year, throughout the summer. Uh, these, These random promos and vignettes and things like that. And then, of course, the Ted DiBiase, he claims he has... Purchased the Undertaker. He has found the Undertaker. Mm-hmm. He has brought him over to his own dark side. Paul Bearer protests that and says he's going to bring the real Undertaker to SummerSlam. 
Meanwhile, as Steven brought up, we had Leslie Nielsen running around uh, yes. from the Naked Gun doing some hilarious vignettes trying to find The Undertaker. And that all culminates in the main event here, SummerSlam 94. So yeah. do they have a figure of this guy? The Undertaker? They do not. They do not. They, do not. they should. Why not? They should make a two-pack. I agree. They just make I, it slightly I, different, a little bigger. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, why not? That's I, money. I agree. You know how many people would buy that? <laughs> oh, they absolutely would. At least me. <laughs> At least oh, yeah. me, y'all. Yeah. No, absolutely. seriously, like, the, nostalgia, the people our age, the nostalgia for this, having an Underfaker and Undertaker two-pack, that'd be oh, insane. Yeah. You're welcome, WWE. Do that. Yeah. Uh, WWE is definitely, definitely, definitely listen to this podcast for figure. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. they're they're kind of they're kind of running out. Like they went to the mean Mark Callus. Right. Well, like they they, they got it. They they kind of digging deep here. So I, exactly. I think they need some some fresh ideas and put do a three pack with uh, or a four pack. You have Ted DiBiase. You have Paul Bearer. Make it a five yeah. pack with Leslie Nielsen. Give me oh, a Leslie oh, Nielsen. Yeah. Oh, just take my just take my money. Yeah, I'll buy that. That will get me to buy figures. There you go, right there. <laughs> Again. Um, of course, this is Brian Lee, uh, also known as Chains in the WWF, uh, was in ECW, kind of bounced around, did, did a lot of different things. A friend of The Undertaker here is playing this under faker role. Mm -hmm. uh, t you know, all things considered, doing a pretty good job, like, you know, uh, not a bad representation, you know, from far off with the hair in the right. eyes. Kind of pulls it, it, pulls it off his, okay. It, it is his cousin. Are they cousins? Yeah. I didn't really know that. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. There he is. And this is all taking place in my hometown of Chicago, Illinois. Chicago. I thought you were from Florida. I didn't know you were from Chicago. Yeah. All right. Chicago. Chicago. So you would CM have been Steven, uh, Chicago made. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been about like one years old when this uh, was taking place. Uh, one and a half. I was born okay. October '92. So there you go. Almost, hit, you almost go. hit the two mark. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. And Paul Bear, of course, you know, <laughs> over the top, but in the best Look at way. That casket. Custom Golly, made casket. So good. And. This is something you don't really see the Undertaker coming out in the casket. Right. He's usually got that reserved for his opponents. Mm -hmm. But the Druids, uh, they, they can only afford two Druids on this. I night. mean, but what's up? <laughs> These guys are slow. So, yeah. What do you think of that yeah. casket? It's beautiful. I mean, yeah. I, 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 the artwork on top really makes it. It really does. I wonder if they have that in the like uh, archive place. Oh, that I thing oh they have to, right? Oh, it has his un has his name on the side. I didn't notice yep. that before. I didn't either. Paul Who Bear does? getting it in exactly the right position, directing them as he does. I love that Druids can take orders from Paul Bear. Well, who else would you take the orders from? Of course, they're not like ring race from Lord of the Rings or anything. They actually, you know, can take orders. Oh, the smoke rising up. The Undertaker is not in the casket. Ah, oh, it's oh. just the urn, the just giant the... urn. <laughs> this is the urn that would glow, wouldn't it? Like uh, the flashlight urn. Yeah, we're gonna see that in a minute. Yeah. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> it's it's ninety four. If this is a spoiler, yeah, this is also not the real Undertaker in the ring right now. What? <laughs> you are... Spoiler alert. Everybody can shut the pay per view off now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're listening and you made it this far and you've never seen this match, I don't know who you are. <laughs> I mean, this mega size urn Paul Bear has handed over to Earl Hebner. Big daddy urn, man. You think while Taker was off, he just put on some pounds or something? He's got to fit in that urn. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the here's the weird thing about the urn is. Last time we saw the urn, it had like oh, some sorry. green smoke in there. And then uh, I think we've seen before with uh, it's one of the earlier Star Series, it had some ashes and yep. like, dust in there. And now it's got a uh, spotlight. Flashlight, yeah. It's got the bat signal in there. Exactly. It has whatever it needs to have for the narrative of that day. Ah, so, okay. It's like a superhero show. Whatever ability they need to, to defeat the villain, they have that that day. 
and, yeah, and Paul Bear, Paul Bear has never had more fun in his life than showing no. this flashlight no. out around the United Center. Is this the United Center? That's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah, that's where the Bulls, man. That's great. It's, this I was the first dance right here, baby. I think it's the first thing of the United Center. It's literally the first dance, the first event they ever held there. Wow, the he, August. yeah, take that, AW. <laughs> first dance. August 29th, 1994, we got here. Wow. That's and awesome. Look at this screenshot right here. Look at that. The shadow, oh. the purple light of The Undertaker here. And uh, a historic moment because as The Undertaker is in the ring with the gray gloves and the gray tie and the gray uh, stirrups or whatever on the boots, we're going to see here the arrival of the purple gloves and the purple tie oh, yes. and the purple boots on The Undertaker. I mean, Stephen, what's your preference? Are you purple taker or gray taker? Oh, purple. Really? Okay. Yes. Me too. Man, I'm the, color kind of... combination, the color combination is so much better. Yeah, I mean, I, I like it. I, I, I think it's great, but I'm a, uh, I got to go with the original. Man, uh, the gray gloves for me is just... Uh, what I grew up on, what I what I first came to love, so that's that's my personal preference. But uh, interesting, okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. I just like no, the, no. the way the color pops. Like you said, the color, the, like your shirt right now, the the purple on it just popping for yeah you know, against the black there. So it's it's good stuff. I do like it. Man, he's even more like Batman. He got the bat so you know, I didn't even, even thought about that. So it's great. <laughs> so much Batman stuff here. Take her. Oh. What a great shot. I, I mean, want a the, jack like that. The button's all up the back, too. And this Half is... Half the back. This is all production right here. You oh, know, yeah. SummerSlam 94, right before this, literally, the match before this was Bret Hart versus Owen Hart, Steel Cage, fantastic cool. in-ring, technical wrestling, the best of the best of that sort of wrestling... Versus right here, this is all just smoke and mirrors, and it's the other this is side. Sports entertainment, yeah. Sports entertainment, boom, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I mean that Owen and Brett match before we started rolling here. I was laughing, fast forwarding to here, just how that was not the main event. You know, like that's insane because that's one of my favorite matches ever. That's one I remember borrowing that tape from you, and you're like, "You got to watch this match." And I video, I recorded it from one piece. VCR to another because I had to have that match on my own VCR. It was just, I mean, on my own VHS. It was insane. Look at this, the way they're taking the hat off together. I'm digging it's just it. It's awesome, man. man. I love it. I'm enjoying it. This is so fun. The crowd's on their feet, man. Except for, yeah, no, they're on their feet. All and, of them. And give credit to Ted DiBiase and, and Paul yeah. Bear because they're yeah. both like putting this over. Ted DiBiase knows he's screwed. <laughs> he's just yeah. like, he's like, I'm out of here. Dang it. Paul Bear comes out, you know who the real one is. Oh, absolutely! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no question. Yeah, but they did Chicago what they could. Such a good town. You know, they they drew the tattoos on Brian Lee, and um, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. they, they they did what they could with it, and uh, he he did make a few appearances, obviously on TV, and had a few matches, and um, again, you know, for 1994, there's no real internet, you know, there's no smartphones or anything like you, know, you could kind of pull something like this off sure. and like make people question and wonder what's going on here. You couldn't do this yeah. in 2021 so much. No, no, no. No, they'd leak it and tell you they were going to do the storyline beforehand. Yeah. It'd be ridiculous. I didn't think, I forgot this was in Chicago. What a great, like, I know it's a ridiculous moment, but what an iconic moment. And then, like, you know, two and a half years later, he's going to win the title in Chicago at WrestleMania 13. Oh, yeah. 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 Here we go. Oh, throat slash. Yeah, done. That's just, yeah. that's great. Ooh. And there it is right there. There it is. Yeah. You he know stops the, the punch. Is. It's the uppercut. Oh, ducks the clothesline. Oh, shoulder to shoulder, <laughs> face to face. This is great, man. Ooh. So let's got the under faker in there with the gray. I, I do like that because if they were both in gray, it would have been a little confusing. Ooh, leap so. the Undertaker. Yeah. Ooh, big. Yeah, that's what you see every day. Nah. Not uh, in uh, this day and age, no. And yeah. that's the. The cool thing about this match, you travel back in time in 1994, you don't know what's going to happen with this. You right. don't know what Undertaker versus Undertaker means. Are they going to be in the same gear? How are you going right. to tell these two people apart? So, uh, you know, that's the, kind of the brilliance here of Undertaker changing his look and changing his gear 
And it's the mm-hmm. first indication, you know, we've seen it. We talked about it on our show, Stephen, like how many times Undertaker has changed his look. Yeah. You know, you, people think, oh, he's just the dead man, but he put so much effort into, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. differentiating that and wearing different gear throughout the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, even if when he stays in the purple, he still changes it up with like a different top yep. or, you know, different color. <sighs> He different colored purple and gloves and boots and everything like that. Yeah, when you get into like the the late two thousands and stuff, you know mm-hmm. he he's putting different things on the side of his legs like uh, mm-hmm. in every match and it's stuff like I didn't realize back at the time, but when you go back and watch all the matches together, you're like you really appreciate that stuff. Yeah. Oh, Taker just goozled Faker and threw him over the top to the outside. You know, and that's one thing, you know, I think we talked about on here, like, you know, Chris Jericho calls himself the Madonna of wrestling because he's always constantly reinventing himself and changing. But he also talks, he puts Taker over and saying that Taker is like that too, which I'm glad Jericho does that because he likes to talk about himself a lot. But he does give props to Taker and saying that that's kind of, you know, kind of how he, like where he got it from. You, you got to change it up. Even though he's always the dead man, even when he's American, you know, right. BA, he still was changing stuff up. And sure. what we saw when he's me, Mark Callis, when we went to those old tapes. Uh, he it was, was or, no, yeah, all sorts of weird Cal- stuff. That was when he was, uh, golly, what was it? Master, Master Pain. Master Pain. Yeah, he was changing his outfit every week. So, yeah. And uh, Faker just hit a signature Undertaker move. He did. That, that apron stunner right there. That was pretty nice. We got the boys from Bottom Line podcast, favorite referee, Earl Hebner, in the ring. Yeah, one of their right favorites. Uh, and the Fakers going for the old school. How about that? How about it? Oh, not today. Oh, but- Take her with a goozle. Has he done many oh, top rope choke throws? N- not to, oh, not that I recall, because, you know, not too many people are going to try that rope walk against him. Yeah. But with the sit-up there Golly. from the faker. Can you imagine being in Chicago in 94? Golly, what a great town. The Bulls were on fire. Mm-hmm. It's just, man, good stuff, man. This is happening. Take it, like, I'm gonna show you how it's done. So. What a time to be alive, right? Yeah. yeah. You got Michael Jordan and you got Undertaker versus Undertaker. Yeah. You also have Brett Nolan. So. <laughs> <laughs> Taker just showed the faker how it's done, man. He did the top rope walk and pulling him by his hair. Oh man. You know it's Again, it's not uh, go ahead, Travis. I was gonna say this is slow, it's methodical, it's not your you know, whoa, <laughs> and that was <laughs> ugly like, right there. <laughs> yeah. My point being, that would prove my point, is it's not pretty like Brett and Owen was. It's not technical, but it's 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 entertainment, and it's it tells a story, and that's what I love. Taker always tells a story. Yeah. There's a reason these two guys are going at it, whether you yeah. like it or not. Yeah, and um, it, it just goes to show the importance of The Undertaker, like in 1994, um, this isn't for the world title. The world nope. title was before this. And yep. the next pay-per-view, Survivor Series, it's going to be Undertaker and Yokozuna in the main event. Again, not for the world title, but that just, Undertaker was, even though he wasn't the champ, he was basically the top guy there mm-hmm. back then. And, and they were using him in that way. Yep. Poor mm-hmm. Brian Lee's missing his spot. <laughs> it's uh, it's not a great performance by yeah, Brian he's Lee. Not... He's, yeah. he's in a tough spot, you know? Well, it's he's not made to go this long in a match. Basically, he's used to being the squat, the guy squashing people. But you're also imitating. Up. You're having to wrestle right. like somebody else. It's a really yeah. weird spot to be in. Yeah. I wish they bring back these ropes, man. Golly, it's fantastic. The red, what, and the white and the blue. It's awesome. Agreed. They do it at like NXT does, like the Great American Bash I and could stuff. I see that. But yeah, for sure. Yeah, they do that, but WWE never does. There you go. <laughs> the lady just patted Taker on the back, and then that dude told her to quit. Wouldn't have Look it. at that. Look at that glove on the side. That's what you, you were talking about, enough. Steven. Yeah, yes. I love that. Love it. I want that. Just the glove. <laughs> just the glove. Yeah. Is this your glove? Yes. Now, you see, that look of the faker there with the hair in his face Yeah, looks, looks pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. Uh, yeah. Pretty good impression of the Undertaker, and he does a good job in his appearances on uh, Monday Night Raw and Superstars mm-hmm. and stuff when he's impersonating him. You know, I think this this 
angle this match gets crapped on a lot and understandably but sure you know for what they're trying to do i i think they do a, a pretty decent job with it that guy's okay. t-shirt is way too big a razor ramon kid walking down the steps in the back. oh my god he's wearing a <laughs> nightgown on his ankles the nighty <laughs> oh my god they must have only had larges before <laughs> His dad's like, I'll get you one, son. So dad, one got, got left. Dad, dad got him one his own size. Yeah. That's right. wear it. I think that's a Tatanka shirt, actually. Now that I look is at it. Is it Tatanka? Okay, maybe so. it is. Yeah. Is that worse or better than Razor Ramon? Oh, uh, worse. Way worse. <laughs> Under Faker about to go for the people's elbow. Nah, he's... <laughs> he's going to go for the uh, pin. Slow yep. pin. Yep. Yep. Taker sits up. That that would never happen today. They, they would have been flipped around, reversed toward the yes. toward the hard cam. You're right. They didn't care as much back then. Oh Lord, oh, have mercy! <gasps> Ugly oh, tombstone. Goodness, Taker just got tombstone on oh. his head. Oh my gosh. T- DiBiase is like, why are you wasting time? He's Iron like, Sheik is cheering him on on the crowd. Sheiky <laughs> <to> baby. <laughs> The sit up and the crowd goes mild because <laughs> they. <laughs> I can't take my eyes off that kid with the giant shirt. <laughs> I know that's the only You're thing welcome. you can see now. That's it. That's the only thing take you can see. To... Oh, oh, I love that spot. The tombstone it never gets old Flip to me. Over. Take her, take her knows where the hard cam is. He Ooh. knows where the hard cam is. I don't Ooh. know for sure. That might have been the first time first that's ever jumping? happened. Like the first time they did the tombstone. The flip over. Flip over. Oh, okay. Like it's tombstone. Take her to the it might have been that too. too. Yeah. Oh, for he's sure. not done with him yet, though. Oh. He's gonna goozle him, pick him up, as he should. Through. You know, this one guy, more time, one more time. This yeah. guy has stolen his identity. Got the arm hooked. Look at that. You're coverage. exactly right, Travis. He is right Take there in the nose. middle. To he talk knows. a shirt, he's kid pro, is having a moment on the stage. <laughs> TSK, man. I want to figure of that kid <laughs> Tatanka in the Tatanka shirt. nightgown. Is it, t- no, I'm th- is it Tatanka or is it 123 kid? Uh, <laughs> I think it's Tatanka. I think we we'll need to. We'll have to that. look it up. You got to add that we'll to, to the collection. Up. Paul Bear, say it one more time. Yeah. One more time. <laughs> it's all about the- look at that. Three tombstones. Same thing he does to Kane. Goo! At WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I didn't think about that. He does that to Kane, too. Get One. rid of the faker, too. Uh, three. Yeah, that guy loves it. In the crowd. Yeah, well, yeah, mercifully. What's that over. kid doing? Yeah, mercifully, it is over. There's the Sheik right there. Dude, did you see that airbrush heartbreak kid shirt? I got it homemade. Oh, man. The fashion. The kid in the Orlando Magic thing at the Bulls. It's because it's What's Shaq. It's a Shaq jersey, man. Oh, oh DBIC uh, is. I've got the same jersey, it. brother. Yeah, DBIC lives He's to fight another the day. Druids. He does, and the druids come out with their rope belts. Oh my gosh! Oh, there it is! Wow, well, you had that on hand. That's wow. amazing. Why did you, you have that on hand? He was, he was just waiting for this moment to show up. <laughs> I was just going what through my stuff. That, <laughs> that wasn't planned. Either. That was not. That was insane. It was just there. <laughs> One of the best things ever happened. <laughs> they just rolled Faker in there. Oh uh, man, it's sinned. perfect. Oh, uh, here we go. We got to take her back. The true Ooh, Undertaker pose. with the pose. bat symbol, Paul Bear, just <laughs> circling yeah, around. Like dancing Queen. Yeah, just <laughs> shining the light on him. Just That's showing so you good. In his true glory. Paul Bear is the best. I love him. He's so good. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is this is cool. I don't care what you say. Yeah. This is like mm-hmm. uh, the Undertaker with the E with the turned back. <laughs> I love that they had a, the crowd. They had a guy with the hyphen too. Under <laughs> hyphen, they went to the trouble of making a hyphen. <laughs> for the Undertaker. That's good stuff right there. That's the '90s right there for you, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Oh man, what? He would. Sure are taking lots to of me, camera shots. I'm just kidding. This is the Batman Forever of wrestling matches here. Like it, the production, it's cheesy, it's goofy. We got the Macho Man out here yeah. for some reason talking to the camera. <laughs> the I have man. no idea why. 
Yeah, that's, he's pretty close to jumping over. But, you know, nostalgia-wise, this is great. And Batman Forever, you can crap on it. It's, it's over got, the top. It's got some... Yeah, it's, it's over the top. It's ridiculous, yeah. but it's fun. <laughs> oh, we got Leslie Nielsen! We got Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> <gasps> and the under faker is gone. Where is he? He's ascended. No, the point is the pointing. The pointing. Yeah. What's going on? To, I think it's to the case. It's closed. The case is closed. Oh, they had the money in the bank. Gosh, I love it. The case is closed. <laughs> That's what he just said. Yeah, the case is closed. <laughs> Leslie Nielsen, uh, a genius. Quite fair. Copyright ninety four. Tiger that, Force. That's how SummerSlam that, goes yeah. off the air. Is Leslie freaking Nielsen? Yeah. With uh, a gold briefcase, gold Halliburton. Oh, I your, love it. What's y'all's favorite Leslie Nielsen movie? Oh, oh man, man, that's tough. There's so many that are just the same, but they're all funny. <laughs> they're I don't know. Funny. They're all funny. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to pick. It's hard to pick. Yeah, it's hard to pick. I mean, even as, yeah, I mean, airplane is great. <laughs> yeah, I would go with. Naked, I mean, naked gun. All the naked guns. Are, spy yeah, hard. Spy hard. Oh, they're, all good. they're all just ridiculous. Yeah. All right, uh, Stephen. Watching it back, you said maybe not your favorite match. How are you feeling about Undertaker versus Undertaker? Watching it back now. Um. I eat the same thing as I was thinking, you know, <laughs> not my favorite man. You didn't change your opinion on it too much. No, I mean, it's not something I rewatch, but it's, yeah. it's fun. It's fun. For, you yeah. know, 94, WWF 1994, it's, it's fun. Exactly. I think yeah. so. Travis, what do you think? Yeah, same thing. Again, just, it's dumb. It's, <clears throat> it's over the top, but it is fun watching Taker and just seeing him come back. I mean, that was his return, you know, like mm-hmm. he's been gone. That's a that's a long time to play a storyline out. Um, that wouldn't happen nowadays. You can't be gone that long. Uh, it's crazy unless you're having a baby or something, which he obviously wasn't. But uh, no, you know, they you, can't. <clears throat> back it on. We, we we didn't cover it on here, but you go back and watch on that on the pay per view. There, there's like a six minute video where they talk about mm-hmm. this whole storyline playing out and all yeah. the stuff they showed on TV leading up to it. Uh, you know, it's a different era. It's a different time, but it's uh it's kind of fun to go back and watch here. So. Yeah. A good, a cool thing to uh, for us to talk about, just something for us to to have fun and laugh about here. But uh, uh, that kind of brings things to a close here for the year twenty twenty one on this particular episode of Talking Taker. Steven Zeman, collecting Dead Man. Want to thank you for joining us on here. It has been a pleasure uh, to finally have you on. Uh, why don't you tell everybody? Where to find you, where to find the podcast, give everybody all the plugs uh, oh. so they can check you out if they have not already. Oh, well, it's, first of all, it's a pleasure. You know, it's it's my pleasure to be here. You guys are awesome. I love listening to you uh, when you're doing it every week and now every month. You guys are the best. So it was my Thank pleasure. You. To be here. Thank you, man. It means a lot. And you can find me on Instagram at Collecting Dead Man, on Twitter at Collect Up Dead, um, have Facebook Collecting Dead Man, YouTube channel. Um, you know, you can hear my podcast wherever podcasts are found, your preferred podcast platform, as I always say. Uh, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, Google, everything in between. Very good, very good. Uh, you just dropped episode 37 of the show. You've got the weekly episodes. You've got watch alongs with, uh, like we said, Randy Turco, uh, Canaanite 10, uh, Keegan. Um, yeah. I don't know how to say his last name, but Keegan. <laughs> He's been on there a few times. I've been on there a few times. So those are always fun to check out. If you want to keep The Undertaker in your ears every week the undertaker talk since we're not here every week go check out collecting dead man on your favorite podcast app, folks gets our seal of approval um no doubt uh what just, was the what was the date of this SummerSlam we just watched august 29th 29th okay i was looking at dose i was gonna say what's on the what's on their show they had no august pay-per-view they had oh interesting batch at the beach in july was flair okay. and hogan 
And then the oh. month after this would have been Fall Brawl. The Stud Stable was the main event versus Dusty Rhodes, Dustin, Ooh, the Nasty Boys. And the so, Nasty Boys. Yes, yeah. sir. Stud Stable. That's a good Arnie main Anderson, event, right? Buckhouse there. Buck, Colonel Robert Parker, and Terry Funk. That's so, a yeah, good main event. I was just event, right I was there. interested to see what was going on on the TV show. So. No, I appreciate Again, bringing that up. Again, pre Nitro, too. It was pre Nitro. And Raw had only been on for, what, a year and a half? It's crazy to think about. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. weird time. Uh, no, no, SmackDown, no, I don't think they had monthly pay per views at this time. Mm-hmm. No, it's still a couple of years away from that. Yeah, so, still yeah. got yeah. big four only. 27 years ago, uh, wow. looking back at that. So that was fun to look back at. Um, just a few quick plugs here as, as we wrap up this episode. I uh, want to, of course, give a shout out to uh, the bottom line wrestling cast going through the career of stone cold, Steve Austin. Uh, they've entered that era where they're actually done with stone cold's in ring career. Then now they're covering sort of month by month, his right. time as the sheriff, yeah. as the general manager, all that sort of stuff. Uh, a lot of uh, fun stuff for them still talking about there. So of course, check them out on the bottom line wrestling cast. And then I've got a new podcast to shout out here, folks. Uh, this is one, Travis, you and I, we we have mentioned this would be one that would be a, a great follow-up to The Undertaker. You even brought him up in tonight's episode. There is a new podcast on the scene called Pod is Jericho. Good. And they are covering the career of Chris Jericho. Awesome. Pay-per-view by pay-per-view. Uh, they're actually starting back in the ECW days with some of the ECW super shows. Awesome. They just dropped their first episode. I gave them a listen. These guys are good. They know what they're talking about. They have done some other podcasts in the past, so they've got good production values. That's uh, awesome. A couple of uh, guys from the UK, so they are fun Listen, the first episode's like 30 minutes long, so, you know, good, quick, to the point. Kind of like our first episodes mm-hmm. used to be <laughs> before, yeah. before now. Not a lot of talk about it. <laughs> but check out Pod is Jericho if you love this format of, you know, going through one wrestler's career. Uh, I don't know if they'll stick with it, but, uh, you know, go give them a, uh, some support here in those early days as, as they start that up. And, uh... Man, I, I just want to mention, this is the end of the year. This is 2021. Uh, as we close out this year, this was the year that, uh, Travis, you and I, we completed this journey through The Undertaker's career uh, back in March. And, and then mm-hmm. we, you know, kept it going through these bonus episodes. Steven, this was the year you started collecting Dead Man. So we've got that cool crossover. And how about this, guys? This is the first year since 1990 that The Undertaker has not competed in a professional wrestling ring. I mean, what, what do you have to say about that? It's definitely an end of an era. Yeah. And it truly yeah, it's is. It's real. Yeah. It's real. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah it's crazy. I, um, I was thinking they were going to announce his... Um, for ticket sales for for WrestleMania, since it's two nights, I mean, trying to get two hundred thousand people to come or a hundred thousand to buy two nights of tickets. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of people to get. Um, I thought they would go ahead and announce that he's going to be in the Hall of Fame just to yeah get people to be like, hey, you can you know let's let's get this ticket sales. But they didn't. But yeah, it's weird to think about him not competing. I'm I'm confident he's going to go in the Hall of Fame at WrestleMania. He's got to. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, him not being on a show or anything not wrestling it's just, it has been a weird year for sure for sure it's like we've seen whole... we've seen mark calloway instead of the undertaker so that's right yeah it's like a whole generation of people didn't know anything but seeing the undertaker fight yeah. now a whole generation's gonna be born not even knowing mm-hmm. you know, not even knowing seeing him fight yep i mean you have literally not lived in a world where the Undertaker yeah. didn't compete at least one time in, in a year. And this is the first time in your lifetime that the Undertaker did not step inside a uh, a ring. Yeah. I guess, you know, last year it wasn't quite in the ring, but he still had a match, you know, the Boneyard match and all, and well, all that. He had a two-weight cut. Oh, yeah. The you, Kuwaiti cut. Yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're right. You're right. 
So he did step in a ring last year. That but, is uh, an accolade on his Wikipedia page, so it counts. Yeah, it, it absolutely does. No, we covered it. We covered the episode for it. Yeah, we so, did. Uh, man, strange times. Uh, yeah, predictions. Uh, do, do we feel confident he's going in the Hall of Fame next year? Uh, do we think we'll, we'll see him in the ring at all, possibly next year? I mean, any uh, any wild guesses, crazy thoughts for next year, for 2022? I I think Hall of Fame and maybe something in the ring. Yeah. At WrestleMania, definitely. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he'll wrestle again, but I think he'll come out as the Undertaker. And, like, I mentioned this a long time ago. Um, it was from JR. I don't want to take credit for it, but he mentioned uh, – once they do Hall of Fame for Taker, just have him be it. Just have him be the Hall of Fame attraction. Have people come up and just talk about him. He didn't. He he didn't have to give a speech even. Like I mean, he may want to now that he's kind of broken that fourth wall for us and stuff. But even if he doesn't want to, have everybody who's involved in his career just come up and give stories yeah. the whole time. Do it on the Peacock like you normally would Hall of Fame, but have it yeah. just be a Taker night. Because who else are you gonna throw on that night? And like, it's not gonna. It's, no one else is going to – it's going to pale in comparison to having the night be about him. So why not do the whole night about him? I think that is a genius idea. Thanks, JR. I think that would be awesome. I don't think you'd lose any ticket sales or anything. I think there's enough Undertaker no. fans out there that would be a part of that. you got different people that can come give speeches and all that. I, I think it would be a really awesome moment for sure. Yeah, I agree. Yep. I think uh, the three of us would have to find a way to be there uh, for sure if that if that was the case as well. So, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Um, but as far as 2022 goes in talking Taker World, we're going to be here. We're going to keep these monthly episodes coming uh, in case we need to cover a Hall of Fame or something like that. Uh, and any other kind of Undertaker news, but we're just kind of, you know, we love doing this. I, I've been looking forward to this night uh, for a couple of weeks now. I've been so looking forward to recording. Uh, so, so I'm having a blast doing these every month. Uh, I've got a list of different topics and different things we can talk about. We've got some different things to explore, um, some Coliseum videos, uh, some movies, uh, some weird random stuff. And you guys may be wondering, January, that's typically Royal Rumble month, right? Uh, we And we've covered every Undertaker Royal Rumble, right? Every one of his matches. We do a watch along for all his Royal Rumbles. Uh, there is one. There is one we haven't done yet. And it's from Osaka, Japan from the year 1994 from a house show in Japan. It's... A lost match. It's on my VHS home video on YouTube from Japan. And next month for our January episode, Royal Rumble month, we're going to look at a Royal Rumble from Japan. An 18-man Royal Rumble from Japan. Spoiler alert. Won by The Undertaker. The second Royal Rumble that he won. During this time, in 1994, when he's supposed to be mysteriously disappeared apparently he was in japan winning royal rumble matches so yeah. uh man that is gonna be a fun one to do next month uh i'm guessing a lot of you fans out there have never seen maybe even never heard of this royal rumble uh but we're gonna dig that one up from beyond the grave and cover that on next month episode and that's just a taste of what we're gonna be bringing you in 2022 some weird random wild stuff uh to explore different aspects of the undertaker beyond just his pay-per-view matches and uh maybe we'll have steven along again sometime in 2022 uh we'll bring him back uh for a return appearance uh and uh uh, we'll bring all our other friends of the podcast back along next year. Can't wait to see what we get to talk about in 2022. Uh, man, that's all, that's all I got. Travis, you got anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think I don't have any more shows coming up because it's the end of the year. It's so, the end yeah, of the year. Good. You got a new album potentially. I will. Yeah. It was, uh, won't be out by the time this drops, but it'll be out hopefully before Christmas. Before I'll Christmas. A okay. EP. Yeah, so I told him there's no rush on getting it done. It's a lot of it's a busy time of the year right now. So yeah, we'll uh, I've recorded it, but we just haven't put it out yet. So yeah, well, that's we'll exciting, that man. Christmas, so yeah, it's good, good stuff. So 
And yep. uh, Stephen, we just want to thank you again for joining Absolutely. us. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you along. And uh, we hope everyone checks out Collecting Dead Man and uh, uh, continues to uh, travel through uh, the Taker podcast universe. Absolutely. Y'all have a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy All the Things that are happening, festivities, Happy Holidays. And uh, But most importantly, while you're out there, ladies and gentlemen, stay safe. And as always, take her easy. Nailed it. <laughs> oh, thought I forgot. It's been six weeks. <laughs> <laughs>